Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining our Kentico Technical Webinar on CRM Connect, a new offering from Gold Partner eMakina to integrate Kentico with Microsoft CRM. My name is Brian Soltis, and I'm the Technical Evangelist here at Kentico, and I'll be hosting this presentation, as I usually do. And uh, in this session, we're going to have uh, Peter Kojak and George Pfeiffer from eMakina, who's a Gold Partner and has just about every certification I think you might be able to get for Kentico. Um, so they're a really established partner out of Europe and they build a really awesome tool to help you integrate Kentico in with a Microsoft CRM and to be able to use the data in both systems. So I'm really excited about this webinar. I know they're going to show some really interesting information. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to just review a few points about the webinar. We are recording it as we always do and we will post it to our Kentico YouTube channel after today. If this is your first time using GoToWebinar, just know that everyone is in listen-only mode. There is a QA window where you can ask questions throughout the presentation. Um, I'm seeing this for the first time too, so I'll do my best to answer your questions as they come up. But I know that uh, Peter and George have left some time at the end to answer questions as well. So we'll try to address any questions after the presentation. So feel free to use that QA window during the presentation or if something just comes to mind throughout, their present, uh, throughout the session. So with that good, uh, kind of taken care of and out of the way, I'd like to go ahead and hand it over to, to Peter Kojak and he's going to introduce the CRM Connect for Kentico. Peter, please take it away. Hi, thank you, Brian. So as uh, Brian introduced me, uh, my name is Peter Kojak and I'm from Imakina HR. And today we're going to talk about um, our product CRM Connect for Kentico. So uh, the agenda will be, I'll give you a, a brief introduction why um, there is a need for CRM connector. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, our architecture and George is going to show us a demo and we're also going to share a roadmap and at the end uh, we'll answer any questions. So let's start with uh, a little bit of a story. So let's imagine that um, we have a pretty mature uh, digital client uh, that is right now uh, being ready to launch a site and they know what they want and they have all this really nice office site and they're using Kentico EMS. So they're using, um, a, let's say, a lot of marketing tools inside of Kentico EMS. They're using marketing automation, they're using contacts, they're using uh, leads, uh, scoring, they're using um, also some segmentations. And on the day one when they launch their site, they, they get a lot of data. And this data is just coming in, new visitors are coming in, campaigns are running and everything is just coming in and it takes a lot of time to process this data uh, to identify uh, the current customers, um, what will be the possible like uh, future customers. So it, it's kind of a big uh, confusion. So now let's take a story a little bit in a different direction. So let's imagine that uh, we have a client that is also digital and mature that they know what they want but they also are using CRM. Okay, so we, the current customers are all in CRM and they want to have a 360 view of their customer. So they want to use uh, all of the best features that Kentucky EMS is providing. They want to use all of these marketing tools. They want to use marketing automation. Uh, they want to know their contacts. So they want to get the new users and they want to also get the existing ones. But also they would like to have control over uh, their CRM. So they are connected their CRM uh, to uh, Kentico EMS. So when they launch launch site, they're going to import their contacts from uh, CRM and they're going to create a newsletter campaign and um, all of the existing customers uh, will be automatically registered inside of the Kentico and we can see the results uh, uh, from click, uh, how much they clicked, click to ratio and uh, now th this brings us to a whole new level. Um, when we have uh, the CRM and we have the Kentico EMS we can configure market automation uh, much more thoroughly uh, with, with a bit more precision than uh, that. So what what is a CRM connector? So it's um, basically, we'll talk a little bit about the architecture and it's, um, it's a product that we have developed uh, and it's not just synchronization module, uh, it's a tailor-made application uh, built through Kentico Technology Partnership. Uh, that means that uh, Kentico uh, support us. Kentico was involved in planning. Uh, Kentico uh, saw what we did and uh, basically approved it. 
we're going to talk a little bit about architecture. We're going to tell you about our approach, and we're going to, you know, explain you how our CRM connector works. As I, as I said, uh, it isn't just a synchronization module, so it's a it's a daily made application. So uh, this is how it basically works. We have a CMS, and uh, you know, CMS is collecting uh, this page visits, is collecting this. Uh, contact forms, uh, comments, uh, form submissions, all of this data. And the data um, needs to end up in uh, uh, CRM. In our case, uh, first is Dynamics, and that we did the integration. So to assure that this data goes properly to Dynamics uh, and uh, translates all of this data, uh, we have created a middleware a software that uh, you know gets all of the information uh, in between, uh, translates this data, and then moves it uh, to Dynamics. Uh, the same way goes uh, from Dynamics uh, to CMS. So why have we chose chose this approach? Because um, with this middleware approach, we have um, uh, possibility for future expansions. And uh, our now roadmap, uh, as you'll see, uh, there is sales Salesforce and also a high demand for that. So that's that's just briefly, you know, how it works and what is our approach. Um, and George is now just going to show you. A demo, and he's going to show you how the synchronization and how the configuration also works. So, George, I'm Gabe Pfeiffer from Imakina, and I'm going to show you a brief demo. Um, first, let's start this um, form submission. Um, we can see it. Um, we can try it in our dancing goat application, which I guess all of us know. Um, so let's say we have um, some contact formula. And some customer goes there. And this customer is interested in our product. Um, he writes us a message through the form submission. And in our Canticle system, we usually can see this form submission here on the forms. Now it would be nice if we also have this data in Dynamics CRM in form of a lead. How do we accomplish that? Um, I will show you the config configurations needed for this. So here we can see the configuration on tentacle side. We have here configuration for form submission. Um, you need form name, which identifies um, form in tentacle. And then you need some routing key, which identifies um, the data on the middleware. Now if we go to the middleware configuration, Um, we need a route, um, which is basically incoming data. It listens to, um, to the routing key we defined beforehand in the Canticle system. We need some kind of target system. In our case, we want uh, dynamic CRM. And then, of course, we need to map the data somehow. And here is our mapping configuration. We map each uh, canticle fields to the corresponding uh, dynamic CRM field. What's important here is that we need to define a source key and a source timestamp, which is needed for synchronization of the data. Then when we have this, uh, we can find this all together in a workflow. So our workflow uh, listens or gets data from this route. It targets this system and it uses this mapping. Now we, we configured this, of course, beforehand. And now let's see if we got our lead. OK, I guess we need to log in. Okay, 
So here is our lead. And you see customers interested in our copy. Okay. But what we also want to do is we want to synchronize contacts since um, Kentico um, creates contacts for each unique visitor on the site. And we also want to synchronize these to our dynamic CRM form of contacts. So let's see what configuration is needed for this. Here we have our contact configuration on Kentico side. We again define a routing key and various other options including required fields. Um, these fields are um, the contact is only synchronized to the middleware if these fields are filled because um, Kentico creates um, a lot of anonymous contacts which are not really useful in the dynamic CRM so we only want to transmit contacts which are actually useful to us. So again, let's see middleware um, configuration. We again need to define a route. This is the same route as in the Kentico configuration. We have again the dynamic CRM as our target. And here we again have mapping. What's important again is um, that we define a source key and a source time set. And this time we also need a foreign key to uh, synchronize the contact back. Um, we all bind this together in a workflow. Now let's see if we also got our contact. So here you can see the contract was also synchronized. Then what is missing on is synchronizing contacts bidirectionally. So let's say we, we are in contact with the customer and he tells us he, he got a new email address. Now we update this in the name of CRM. And we also want this updated data in Canticle. So how do we accomplish that? Um, for that, we, we have a plugin for Dynamics CRM. This plugin uh, needs to be registered with the so-called plugin registration tool. We have set up here. Um, here you can see um, this is the installed plugin. And it listens to various events. For example, this update contact event. So what we also need to define, we need to define some kind of endpoint where we want to send the message. For that we, we have a REST API on the middle there. which is basically installed here. And again, we need to define a routing key to define um, the routes the middleware has to listen to. So if we go to the middleware configuration again, you can see this time we have a route type dynamic CRM. It listens to the routing key we defined before. This time our target is Kentico. And in the mapping, um, we define it basically the other way around to um, synchronize the dynamics contact to the Kentico contact. Again, we need um, source key, source timestamp, and foreign key to for the synchronization. And we all bind it together in one workflow 
which the middleware will then execute. So let's see if it actually got executed. Yeah, and we got our new email. Uh, th thank you, George. So uh, this looks pretty pretty easy, you know, when George does it. But uh, actually, it is when uh, when you configure it. Um, and I think the configuration isn't uh, that complicated. I remember in 2010 we did a, a synchronization with uh, some version of Dynamics, and it was it was kind of a headache. And uh, from here, it, it does give you a lot of freedom to uh, add new fields and uh, you know configure both sources to um, you know get the data. So uh, definitely, you know, I love it because you can now use it with uh, multiple our clients. Um, okay, uh, uh, let me share with you guys a uh, roadmap. Uh, so and our roadmap, as everybody was asking, is, you know, when the Salesforce is coming. So uh, Salesforce is uh, the next thing that will be integrated uh, and also a polling mechanism. And all of that is planned, I think, uh, second quarter, right? Second to third, something like that, yeah. Uh, and the final thing that I was uh, actually wanted to be in the first quarter was uh, a slick and easy to use uh, UI for configuration, but that will be uh, probably in the final quarter this year. Um, all in all, um, I think this is a, a pretty nice roadmap. I think, uh, guys, when we get the sales force, then we'll, we'll have a, uh, we'll cover every every request. Okay, so I'll leave it to Brian um, to um, read out the uh, questions. So, uh, sure. Okay, thank you, Peter, and thank you, George. Uh, that was a really interesting demonstration. Um, I we have a couple questions that came in, but um, I'm going to get to a couple at first, just and give people time to kind of process what you gave them. But the first one is: so in this architecture, Emakina is installing the middleware for you on your system, or is the middleware on Emakina's servers, or where does the middleware actually live? Uh, the middleware needs to be at your server in your environment. Um, what you actually need for the middleware to work, um, you need a RabbitMQ server, and you need the middleware service running somewhere. Okay. Uh, thank you. And uh, the next question is, is there, so if you install the middleware, it's on your server or, or some environment that you create, you install the middleware there, is there anything specific that has to be inside your Kentico project or is it really just the endpoint that the middleware needs to point to that you have to create? Um, yeah, of course you need to, you need our Kentico module, but um, that's it for, for Kentico. Then you just um, configure it like I showed it, and it will work. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, next question is, is there a difference if you have on-premise CRM as opposed to cloud-based CRM? Are there, is there anything different if you, depending on your CRM implementation? Um, we actually developed it for um, 365. Um, dynamics, but it will also work on on-premise systems. Okay. And uh, in which versions of Kentico is this connector compatible with? Is it just version 10, or will version 9, 8, or previous versions be supported as well? Uh, 9 and 10, guys, right? Both of it. I'm assuming it's probably because of how the EMS aspects work and the online marketing tracking, which is between 9 and 10, obviously, they're very similar. So um, I'm, I'm imagining you're using the same structure. So I would expect it to be kind of 9 and 10. 8 would probably require some additional changes because of just the difference in architecture and data storage of the online marketing information. But I guess I'll let you elaborate that on a little bit more. Yeah, so now our idea was to work on version uh, 9 and 10. Um, that was the intention, where I think most of the users will upgrade uh, because of the features from 9 and 10. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, next question is, can you push contacts to other entities inside the CRM in, in addition to contacts? Can you push leads? Can you push, you know, warm, hot, cold, all those sorts of things? Is that all that configurable? Yeah, it's, it's really dynamic. Um, 
you can you can synchronize to contacts, you can synchronize to leads, you can synchronize to opportunities. It just depends on your mapping. Um, you could in theory also create your um, your own object and map to this one. It's it's all possible. Okay. Uh, thank you. The next question, I'm, I read it and I, I think I understand what it is. I'm going to paraphrase it a little bit, but it is, uh, have you configured it to sync any user data from Kentico to CRM, such as like browser history and, um, you know, interactions with different areas of your website? I'm assuming this is kind of like online marketing activity data. Have you synced that to CRM as well, or is it just the basic uh, building blocks of a, of a contact or user or lead and in, in that their you know their name their email and things like that or have you synced activity as well no um right now um it's only the basic data of the contact which is synchronized to dynamic CRM I mean I the question is if it makes so much sense to synchronize all the browser history for example okay uh, the next question that we have, and that's kind of an interesting one, but although it may be difficult for you to answer, and that is, what is the typical implementation time for this connector? Is this is this a week's kind of project to implement it? Is it months? Is it days? Um, just so people have an idea of how long it may take to, to install it and integrate it in with their systems. Uh, five minutes, I think. But George, can you correct me? <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty bold, no. bold statement, Peter. Uh, be careful. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure. It's no, actually, I think it will it will take a bit longer, but um, it should it should be really fast to set up. I mean, um, what you need to set up is um, you need to install the the Canticom module. Um, on the middleware, you need a RapidMQ server. You need the middleware application running as a Windows service. And on the Dynamics side, you need a Dynamics plugin. And then it all depends on your configuration. So I guess it could be done in one day. OK, yeah, I would assume it's going to probably be very, very dependent on the type of information that you're wanting to synchronize between the two systems. So um, Exactly. And I remember that uh, when the first, uh, I think, beta was out, I, I was uh, here we were trying out. And uh, it took us, I think, about hour and a half. Okay, just to let you know, Peter, I think your audio may have cut out again there real quick, but as I was listening to you while you kind of try to resolve that, um, it was it only took you like an hour and a half to do a basic implementation. And again, I think it it's going to be largely dependent on the type of data that you have. If you have you know, let's say vanilla implementation of Kentico EMS with, you know, standard contacts and the standard fields that it has. Uh, sorry, guys, can you hear us? I think we just lost for a second. Yeah, we, we got you back, but I think I covered it. It's okay. okay. So it took you about an hour and a half to do a basic implementation. Yeah, with the, with the synchronizing the content, but the, the, on the CRM part, everything was installed. So what I did, I used uh, my local Kentico dancing on installation, and I created actually a completely new contact form. And uh, I want to see the synchronization of that data and obviously, I had George to help me out uh, to, with the configuration and the, with the mapping. But in an hour and a half, we were, we were done with, let's say, that's a simple thing. Just, this is just my experience. So that, that's, you know, for example, to synchronize something simpler, if on the dynamics part, everything is installed. Uh, so okay. for some experience, the developer, it should be. And speaking of the synchronization, is it... Is it on-demand synchronization of contacts or, or information, or can it be scheduled to be executed like once a night in batch or something of that level? Uh, right now, with um, this version, it's um, it's just um, it's nearly instantly. We listen to change events on Kentico and Dynamic side, but um, as you saw in the roadmap, it is planned for the future. Um, to do a polling type of um, synchronization so that you can actually define certain times um, where the synchronization will take place. Okay, and I, I guess on a little bit deeper technical level, is it using the integration bus or a similar kind of functionality to queue these changes or are they synchronous changes that happen between Kentico and CRM? 
Um, and the reason I think the reason I asked for the question is, if one of those synchronization fails, is it queued somewhere so that it can be processed again? You know, at, at a retry point. Um, no, it's not using the integration bus. It listens um, directly to the global events of the contact and of the bus forms. Um, but there is, um, I mean, if anything fails, um, there is a log. And in this log, you can restart um, these events. So, so it's no problem. Nothing will get lost, even if the middleware is offline. Fantastic. So there can, if, if in the event that there is any kind of issue, there is a log that always gets that always gets tracked so that there is an audit process that can be gone through to make sure that those are synchronized as well. Um, what what kind of performance are they, uh, what kind of performance hit should a company expect by having this middleware run? Do they need to allocate a separate server just for this middleware or is it small enough to run with their website and you know their normal architecture that they have? Well, I think it will be fine um, if it runs on the same web server as the website is hosted on. I mean, I guess it always depends on the size of your um, website, but for a normal website, it should be no problem. Okay, fantastic. Um, all right, uh, at this point, I think we've kind of addressed all the questions that people have had, so I wanted to, I wanted to thank you, uh, George and Peter, both for, for answering those. I know some of them were probably some curveballs that you weren't quite expecting, but um, I really appreciate, and I know our audience does as well, uh, if someone wanted to learn more about the CRM connector, I'm, I'm sure there's a site or, or something or an announcement that they can go check out and, and find out the pricing and to see, you know, how they may get started in integrating it. Do you have that information available, Peter? I, I do know that we have a we have a specific page on our website that um, that will tell you a lot of the information about it. I'm going to post that in the general chat right now, so anyone that's watching will be able to kind of see that link and, and access it as well. But it's a it's a nice page. It kind of gives you an, an overview of the whole connector, and that tells you a little bit about eMachina. And what I, what I really like is it shows you a nice visual representation of the architecture of yeah. of the uh, the whole system and how everything kind of fits together. So. So when it comes to Pricing, I can, uh, and for the next steps, hello, I'm Alex, from also from Emakina. We are here as a, as a team today presenting. And there was a project manager in this project, so I can say a little bit more about these things. Uh, the price uh, is currently 2,999 US dollars, and with a 30% maintenance renewal per year. And the price also includes you know, uh, supporting uh, hours, uh, two hours of supporting where we get can help you, you know, set up everything where we can take a look into your infrastructure and uh, all your requirements. And as Peter was saying before, this should be enough. <laughs> okay, this is a very optimistic, but it should get, help you get started. Um, so this is, these are the, the, the conditions you can uh, at the end, we will show a, a link to a website where you can uh, get in contact with us. It's a simple contact form, just um, um, just uh, so we know uh, who we are dealing with, and we will get in contact with you. Next steps afterwards would be that you probably be receive an email with me. We have a short chat, uh, an email uh, where you tell us what are you, what are your requirements are, and then we uh, we will uh, you know discuss everything else either on uh, on a personal level or, or, or on an on email. Excellent. So for the two, $299, uh, 299 price, they actually get two hours of custom consulting so that you'll have basically some dedicated resource to help you integrate the system into your application and kind of overview the architecture. I think that's going to help people be a lot more successful with it so that you know you're not going into it alone. You have uh, the makers of the actual connector are, are going to be available to kind of walk you through getting it integrated and implemented. So I, I think that's a fantastic part of the product offering. So um, 
Okay. Well, with that, I think uh, I think we've all gotten a lot of really good information. I, I really encourage a lot of you to, to kind of check it out. I know in many of the projects that I've done, I've used CRM for I keep, just about all of them. And uh, I've had to come up with some interesting solutions to try to get data from one to the other. So having a, a pre-made thing that does bi-directional synchronization, I think, is, is going to be extremely valuable, especially for enterprise-level customers, so they can sync information back and forth. Um, and uh, before we actually get going, I wanted to I wanted to ask Peter Volzak, who's our technology partnership program manager, who's also on the call. Um, Peter is the one who I think Imakina was working primarily with to to kind of implement the system, at least from a business level and a licensing level. And uh, Peter, did you did you have any thoughts on like how that process went, or or actually maybe a better question is if someone was interested in the technology partnership program. Are you the best one for them to talk to, or kind of how, how would they go about getting more information about doing a similar solution to what Imakina has done? Yeah, thank you, Brian. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, we in Kaliko are really, really interested in working with you guys, with our either our solution partners or other partners to deliver, I would say, greater value to the Kaliko ecosystem like Imakina did with their CRM Connect. So, if you're interested uh, in being part of uh, this ecosystem, if you, uh, for example, uh, did any interesting plugin or integration and uh, you think that it might be a good fit for other partners and would, might bring uh, value to those to other customers as well, just uh, let me know. And probably the best way how to do it is to uh, through the through the uh, mm, either directly uh, via email, which is. It is not on the slide, but I can I can share the, my contact details uh, with Brian, and he, he can post it uh, after webinar. But uh, if you go to our website at uh, 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 and in the partner section, there's a technology partner section. There is a simple form you can fill in, and and we can start a conversation. So really, really interested uh, in uh, in um, your ideas and feedback. Thank you very much, Peter. And if you're not very familiar with the technology partnership program, it's as Peter mentioned, it's a way for us to expand the capabilities of the product by leveraging the expertise and capabilities of our partner community, which is a, it's a kind of interesting scenario in that you know, we can't go, we try to build the best software that we can, but really it's our partners that do these implementations and integrations. So naturally they're going to have, let's say, some more real world experience and some, you know, some history and some projects that they've done and challenges that they've been in over the comments some very unique solutions that they've been able to create to solve their business needs. And uh, Imakina is a prime example of this. I know they've done a tremendous amount of work with CRM and integrating into a number of systems and kind of moving data back and forth. So naturally they were a, a pretty you know, natural fit for the technology partnership program to develop the CRM connector. So um, I think that our partner community has a lot of great experiences and we'd love to be able to partner with each and one each one of you and kind of leverage that expertise to make the overall product better. So thank you very yeah. much for that information, Peter. Maybe one more addition, Brian, from the customer's perspective, from the customer's perspective and user perspective of, for example, Serum Connect. Um, being, being the technology partner or using the tech or, or module or integration coming from the technology partner program means that you can really rely on the quality because the, the integration uh, or the extension goes through the validation process on Kenigo side. So we are looking into the security, into the code, uh, best practices. So you can be really sure that that the quality is behind. And at the same time, uh, the partner, the technology partner, guarantees uh, as a part of the of our partnership. There is a guaranteed technical support and uh, bug fixing and they also provide an, uh, uh, the, the, the regular updates so you can be sure that once Kenica provides a new, new version, uh, this Serum Connect uh, gets an upgrade as well. So this is everything packed in, in, uh, in uh, this uh, technology partnership program. Right, and uh, I'm sure that the, the team at Imakina, Peter and George and Alex, probably can attest that uh, it's a pretty close integration, I would imagine, with the Kentico team as you were developing this connector. Is that is that correct, Peter? Sorry, I didn't catch it. Uh, I'm sorry, this was for uh, Peter uh, Koziak at, at Imakina or, or Alex. Um, I was just going to say that I would imagine that there was a pretty close integration between the Imakina and the Kentico development teams 
to get this working correctly. And I'm, I was just curious how, what their kind of thoughts were on that partnership and how, how closely they were able to work with them. Yeah, hello, uh, Alex and Makina is speaking. It was really uh, a great, uh, great experience for us. Um, you know, it was, uh, we were developing, I don't know, I think, Kentico websites for nearly 10 years now. Um, but um, having to do with Kentico on that level was quite a new experience for us and a very good one, a very fruitful one. We really enjoyed it and I think the outcome is, is quite great to have a product uh, like that on the market, a certified extension. Uh, it, it was really good and we also learned a lot from, from uh, Kentico's way of uh, developing things. You know, when it comes to quality standards, documentation standards, I hope you will all see that when you are hopefully going to use the CRM Connect to Candigo, when you're going to read the documentation. So it was uh, really good, and if anyone ever has the chance to do it, I suggest to do it. Go for it. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Alex, and uh, thank you for the rest of the team at Emakina for building a great connector. Uh, the information is there on the presentation if you'd like to go learn more. And uh, with that, I think I'd like to go ahead and wrap up today's session. Uh, just to remind you, this has been recorded, and we will add it to the Kentico YouTube channel after today. Um, if you've never been to that YouTube channel, you can find a ton of web, uh, webinars and videos there, from how-to videos to technology partnership program ones such as this, to very in-depth, complex, very technical presentations on how to accomplish a lot of different tasks inside the platform. So I strongly encourage you to check that out. You just go to YouTube, search for Kentico, and you'll find a ton of stuff there. And uh, with that, I would like to thank Peter, Alex, and George, as well as Peter Bozak from Kitsko for joining today's call. And I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you very much.